Hello everyone. Welcome to tonight's live stream. Today I'm going to be making another birthday card for birthday month and yeah, I'm excited. So another reminder before we get started that all of the online classes I'm teaching coming up are listed down below, including extraordinary embossing folders, which just started today over at onlinecardclasses.com. So you still have time to get in on it and start right away. So that'll be, that's lots of fun. Um, there's that one. There's a hero arts class. There's the Brutus Monroe class. There's lots. So today we're doing birthday card, like I said, and I've looked through my stash just for some things that might be fun to use. And I came across this stamp set that I think came out in April for Mama Elephant. I think this one was May and this one's April or maybe the other way around. Anyway, you know I can't resist a good cat, right? A good cat card with balloons. Come on, it's so good. Okay, so first I thought I would kind of do a trial run of what I was thinking for the card because it is going to require some masking. I'm gonna stamp it on some scratch paper. In fact, you know what? I might just stamp everything and then arrange it on the five by seven card. All right, I'm going to really roughly cut these out. Okay, so here's my five by seven card. I was thinking I want this little guy about right there and maybe him kind of nestled in right there. And then some like additional little balloons. So it looks more like a, like a bunch of balloons. You know what I'm saying? So these can kind of like be in front of each other and stuff. In fact, I kind of like that. So let's just slide this down and over. And then we've got our happy birthday to you, which can go right there. Maybe this little guy moves over a little more. That can nestle in. And then maybe I even, oh yeah, I can totally get one more balloon in here, but I do want some of the clouds to show in the background. So maybe not. I could have one that's kind of like off to the side here, which is kind of nice. I like that. Tape and just tape all these pieces in place that I can do the stamping. You know what, I think I'll just, I'll stamp the mask at the same time. We'll do that, I've done that in the past, it works well. All right, so I've got my bristle paper right here, putting my little map right on top. And I'm going to tape that map with the template right up there. And then as I start stamping, I can just lift this up out of the way. I do that a lot with when I do cards like this. All right, let's start stamping. I also like to do this because if you have any ink on your stamp, it's not gonna actually touch your project until you have it inked and ready to go. So that's kind of nice. All right, lift that up out of the way. And my inks right here. I'm using VersaFine Onyx Black ink. And because these balloons are, you know, a little bit transparent, like you'll be able to see balloons behind the current balloons, I'm not too worried about masking them as I stamp them. At least I don't think I need to be. Yeah, we'll be fine. In fact, it's just right here. It's kind of overlapping a little bit. That's about it. All right, so here's my masking paper. I'm just gonna put that right there. Then I'll stamp my little guy once again. All right, so he's on the masking paper. Get him lined up. All right. And really I only need the top part because I'm not gonna mask off the string. Okay. 
yes, Bristol paper. Let me show you. It's this, it's Strathmore Bristol Smooth Surface. It's amazing. It's so good. And you'll see when we get to the blending and the water coloring, it's just like magic. I'm tempted to, to cut the stamp apart. I think I will, because I can always mount them back together. Just because I don't want to have to deal with having to mask it, you know? I can always put these back together if I need to easily enough. This will make it so much easier. You know, I am a big fan of if it's going to make it easier on you, if it's going to make it more usable, you're going to use the stamps more if you modify them like this, I say do it. You know, why not? Double checking that's in a good spot. Looks like it. And that is what we call stamp surgery. <laughs> so much better, right? You don't even have to worry about it. Like have inking up the wrong area or whatever. It looks like I have a little tiny bit of the string on the bottom. Not a big deal. I'm not even worried. One, two, three. Lovely. We'll come back for the greeting in a bit. For now, I need to cut out all of these masks. If any of you are wondering about the stamps I'm using, they are linked down below. I've got all of my masks, so I'm going to go through and put them onto all of the images. I'm going to try to make sure I don't overlap too much. Adrian, Adrian's asking, do you save all of your masks when you're done? You know what? Sometimes I do. If they're not too saturated with ink and they're still sticky, a lot of times I will. But sometimes they can get just a little too, too inky and stuff, and then it's not worth saving. Okay, so now I'm taking the Cloud Lines stencil from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm gonna do some ink blending, and I'll just do a hap nice happy blue. So these stencil sets, this is one that I designed for Simon, they're meant to be used so that you can slide your project in and then you can stencil from that side. Or if you want, you can bring it in this way and then you get the top line. So it really just depends on how you do it. And it's wide enough that you can really move around and get different looks. So I think I'm gonna start like right there. Yes, this stencil is linked down below. I believe I already have it in the links that are just listed right below in the video description if you want this stencil. It's a good one. Let's peel up some masks. And I'm going to save them on the back of the stamp set. Let's see. I find masks easiest to peel up using scissors or something sharp. 
Oh, he's so cute. Or should I say she? Because they're going to be my kitties. Why? Okay, so now I'm going to use some Karen markers. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and cut. Okay, first of all, um, so here are my swatch charts for my Karen markers. They don't include the neons though, but these are just the original set. But I have them swatched on watercolor paper. I believe this is Fabriano Artistico. Actually, it might be Arches. I think it's Arches. Yeah, I'm feeling it. It looks like Arches. And this one is Bristol. So notice how they're similar colors, but they're just a little different. Like on the Bristol, everything's just, I don't know, it's just a little bit of a different look, but it's very similar colors. I don't think it'll be too close to the cloud color. I think it'll be, we'll be okay. All right, I'm starting out with the gray because I'm gonna do the cats first. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of gray just where like I want the shadows to be. And then I can kind of with a wet brush, I can bring in water and start to get that moving. Sometimes it doesn't want to move. Like right now, it's not really moving. So what you can do is just add a little more of that color from the marker, and then it does start moving. You just have to get it started. happy. I love it. I can grab my Misty. I'm going to put that greeting down here. So now this stamp set is Celebrating You, also from Mama Elephant. And there it just has this really simple happy birthday to you, which I think goes really well down in this bottom corner. Just like right there. Oh, that was dangerous. My watercolor brush almost got flipped onto the card. Okay. And that Versafine Onyx Black. Lovely. So, hold on. I'm going to just test and make sure this isn't going to be too thick. Oh, that's going to be perfect. Okay. that yeah okay and then this one's going to be a little more just normal and then this one will be another curly Q one like that ta-da so already prepped card base making sure I get adhesive 
on all the edges. And this is like a super strong tape runner adhesive. I know everyone's having like a love affair with using just glue, but I have to caution you when you use like distress ink or even the ink that I use for my clouds or the Karen markers, anything that is water reactive, if you have a little bit too much glue on the back, the moisture will come through and you will see it on your project on the, on the front of your card. It's happened to me. So I just warn you. So that's why I stick with tape runner adhesive a lot because you know, I do so much with water. Okay. What a cutie card. All right, white gel pen. I think just like some cute little polka dots on a few of these or some stars would be really cute. I was gonna do some little stars and they might even pick up a little bit of the color underneath, which I'm okay with because it'll start to look a little bit monochromatic. I think I'll do some dots in between the stars. For those of you who are uh, in my premium membership, uh, we have another member live this week. I believe it's on Wednesday. So you don't want to miss that. The tape runner I was using is Tombow Extreme Adhesive. It's so good. I've used it for years. It's so good. I like that they're not like perfectly stark white because it picks up a little bit of the color um, underneath. I think that's kind of fun. I don't think I need to put patterns on all of them, but maybe just this one up here too. Keep those other two plain. Um, I'm thinking like just little stripes. I like purposely change the curve of the stripe a little bit for the balloon. Um, should I make it crisscross? I'm thinking I might. Yeah, that's pretty cute. So here's the card for tonight. Turned out so cute. I mean, who can resist some cats and balloons? I'm like, come on. So cute. I love the, the blend, like, you know, the masking so you can do the watercolor later with the ink blending behind for the, for the clouds. So, so, so cute. Love it. So that's the card for tonight. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, I'll be back with more birthday cards very soon. I just have to edit the videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.